It's your boy Stack5, coming to you with a message from All The Smoke's partner, DraftKings. Even though basketball season is over, DraftKings is bringing the heat this summer during baseball season. DraftKings Sportsbook is offering all new customers $150 in bonus bets instantly if they place a $5 wager. Yep, you heard it right. New customers bet just $5 on any wager and new customers will receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. Look to take a swing at an even bigger payout. DraftKings has got you covered with the same game parlays. Build your own same game parlay where you can combine multiple bets from the same game into one big bet. If mobile sports betting isn't available yet in your state, don't worry. You can still get in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code SMOKE. Bet $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Buying tickets can be stressful, from finding them last minute, to hunting down the best price, to competing with other buyers for popular events. Your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is a fast, easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets, the best price is guaranteed, you can stop stressing over tickets and start getting hyped about the fun you'll have. I love browsing through the Game Time app and finding the best summertime concerts and basketball games in LA. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals for tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantees you'll always have the best price. If you get tickets in the same section, or row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Snag tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account using the code SMOKE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code SMOKE for 20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. <laughs> Welcome back to All The Smoke. Back. We got a good one today. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Come on. Yeah, man. man. We want to <laughs> welcome to the show one of the busiest mans in Hollywood. Black man. Man, right. Writer, producer, director, actor, creator. The one and only Kenya Barris. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate Thank you for your time, time bro. Appreciate you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Uh, man, what's new? How's life right now? Um, it's crazy. Um, we, uh, I'm... I'm running, a, uh, I started, went back to TV, I'm running up the Richard Pryor, doing a show about Richard Pryor's life. Oh, um, okay. And um, we're in a room for Show that. or a movie? A show. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's Cradle to Grave, just, I mean, his life is so crazy. You could have, one, you could take do a whole show just on him growing up in a whole house, you know what I'm saying? Just that. But it's like, it goes his whole life. And he's one of my heroes or anti-hero, whatever you want to say it, but you know what I'm saying? He made it and did it his way. So I'm doing that. And... um. And it's a writer's strike that everybody's worried about in the next couple of weeks. So kind of trying to get bank as many scripts as we can on that. Um, we, me and Snoop just uh, got, we saw the screen, testing, test screen of his movie. It just came out. He killed it. What's, uh, it's called Underdogs. It's, it's about, uh, it's like Bad News Bears, but Pop Warner football. Okay. Oh, that's dope. And he plays that's dope. A, yeah, it is. He's, he plays and, a coach? Yeah, it's, it's coach. Okay. It's Mike Epps and it's some badass kids. <laughs> Got some Mike Epps, too. Um, and Snoop kills it. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Snoop is just naturally funny. Um, White Man Can't Jump is coming out. Um, should be out in a, a month or so. So we're kind of doing press for that. And um, Rich Paul, I'm doing a, this, that's the next movie I'm set up to direct is... Doing Rich Paul's, I wrote Rich Paul's like biography, oh, kind of really? like his thing. I'm doing that for Netflix, and um, I'm doing something on Famous Amos, like which is people don't think is a crazy story, but this dude Wally Amos, who created Famous Amos, like created like an empire, and people don't know him. Like he created the gourmet cookie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like was like black dude too, right? Black man, first mm -hmm. black. He was the first black agent at William Morris. Mm. Signed Marvin Gaye, signed Simon and Garfunkel. Marvin Gaye gave him the money to start. Famous Amos, he was driving around in drop-top bins, 
fucking with Onyx. Can I curse? Yeah, 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 come on, yeah, man. Yeah. He, was, he was doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? And like, no, gourmet cookies didn't exist before that. It was Oreos, mm -hmm. you know, Chip Chips or whoever. He created that. And like, it's a billion dollar empire. And it's just an example of like financial literacy. We weren't, he wasn't prepared for what came up. And like, just seeing that story is kind of like a um, Cohen Brothers, David O. Russell type of. So that's kind of just, you know, what's going on. And then we're, um, we have the Truman Show with, uh, we did it as a series. Um, Damson Idris is playing Jamal Truman. It's like the, a version of like, you know, how, how you see all the, you know, cop shootings and all that fucked up shit that happens to us on TV. Mm -hmm. That's the Truman Show. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then it's white people like, oh my God, could you imagine if that was real life? You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like telling it from that story and, and rearranging and going to whatever. So we were doing that with, uh, Damn. Anyway, it's that's that's deep. Yeah. So is it, I mean, obviously, I know you have a lot of different hats and do adult. What do you enjoy one more than other? Writing, directing, producing, all of it. I mean, writing. Writing's is, your favorite. I think I think because that's where the you know you got to create the stories. You know what I'm saying I like editing too because I feel like y'all know like you know what I'm saying what comes out in the edit. You can take some, you can shine shit. You know what I'm saying something yeah, that might not up. be something you can make it become something in the edit. And I feel like that's the painting part. You know what I'm saying. Mm. So I think those two parts of it but i feel like you know the biggest part is like more and more we're getting a chance to work with people who look like, like us, us. Mm -hmm. and I, that never has been like that yeah. before well i mean you've been tagged with to me which is a, a not a tough spot but obviously a, a honorable spot of you know you're doing remakes and and legends from our culture and and remakes of legendary movies do you feel the pressure is it more of an honor like how do you look at you got a you know a heavy a, a big plate with with a lot of responsibility on it. Um, I feel like it's it's I'm trying to like do more. You know, if I do a remake, I want it to be big. Like I'm doing Wizard of Oz. You know what I'm saying? And I'm doing that for us. You know what I'm saying? Like she's in the hood. You know what I'm saying? It's a girl in the hood, and she, you know she falls. She's in Inglewood. She falls in the underhood, and tell her from that side. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of <laughs> kind of like trying to tell that. Wizard of Oz back in the day was about turning the mirror. It was the Great Depression and turning the mirror around. I'm like, what? So I want to turn the mirror around. I'm like, what society is like. So if I do it, I want it to be big. We're doing It's a Wonderful Life. We're hopefully, you know, Jamie Foxx doing with this, but that was like one of the biggest Christmas movies ever. So if I do a remake, I want it to be big um, and I want it to say something. Um, I feel like the, the thing I'm really trying to get now into more is like telling original stories. I did this, this movie, You People with Jonah and mm -hmm. Eddie, and it was yeah. like, a you know, People, you know, I got a lot of pushback, but then it blew up in terms of the people, number of people watched it. I think it's like, you know, anyway, it blew up, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like it, it they didn't believe in it, you know what I'm saying? And I think, but we show up for each other. And I, and I think that's what you saw with, you know, Wakanda, you know what I'm saying? Like Ryan's one of my heroes, you know, how he stuck to making that movie about us. No true, what they were calling A-list stars, didn't use none of the Marvel Iron Man, ex, you know, Thor, Captain, Captain America, which they wanted him to, because he was like, if I put that in there, then you'll say that's what that's what movie was. And he took that and he blew it up. And it's one of the most successful. So it, it, it threw away the notion that they say our movies don't travel. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, um, you know, saying this movie that we did with black people, it blew up. And so just like, you know, we now have a chance of all the shit they've told us before like you know taking control like y'all own like this is y'all shit and i feel like that's we haven't had that opportunity now so i think we got that moment but i think we got to be more responsible with it but you're definitely one of the main people pushing that though too so i was about to say that does that come with a sense of responsibility because you are kind of setting the tone as to what you know now what we're able to tell but how we're able to tell it as well um yeah i think it, i think it does i think it also comes with you know y'all been in this position where you know what i'm saying when you get certain certain blessings and certain chances people expect more of you and you still just think you're just trying to figure it out you know what i'm saying like i got kids i got divorces and this and that you know what i'm saying i still got my shit and so i'm i'm trying to like manage life you know what i'm saying but at the same time still do my job right. well you know what i'm saying but i feel like i definitely feel like i feel a sense of responsibility the hard part about it is it's so few of us if i tell a story my version of telling a story, it may not be your version, may not be your version, but, if, but I'm supposed to sort of like be everybody, speak to everybody. The gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's not, that's not, right. you know what I'm saying? realistic. Yeah, I can't, I, don't, I can tell it my way, mm -hmm. but that's not the way. Right. That's one way. And I think there needs to be more of us. Mm -hmm. So like, it's not, you know, like, 
you know, the I, I get a lot of the light skin shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my you know, my kid's mom is mixed. You know what I'm saying? I made a show about my family. My kid's mom is mixed. My kids look like I'm not super dark. So my kid, I made the people look like my, you know, my oh, family. Mm -hmm. And it was you only like light skinned people. And I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, and I feel like, you know, when it comes to like for me, for black shit, like I, I said a joke, but I'm like, I I wanna fucking like just do a versus. Like everything in my career has ever I've ever done has been for us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've never done nothing that's not for us. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But I feel like people will launch into one thing and you know, the biggest thing is when and y'all know when you when Twitter and shit, it's hard not to respond. You know what I'm saying? Very. It's, it's hard not to respond. I'm I, saying something. Yeah, I, I've made the mistake of saying shit. Sometimes I clap back. Sometimes I'll say some funny shit. But I know you're not supposed to. But sometimes when you put my kids and shit in Come it. Come on, man. It gets but, deep. Okay, so well, let me ask you a question. Okay, who says you're not supposed to? Who? Um, her over there. <laughs> okay, my well, to you, they matter. I ain't got nobody that, that matter to me. No, so I, can't nobody well, tell me how I should feel about something. And I, and I think that that more so is coming out, you know what I'm saying, in a, in a way that we, we're taking more control of our narrative. You know right, what I'm saying? Like, right. I think we got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it, the same way it can help us. You know what I'm saying? I look at Kanye and I feel like if that nigga didn't have social media, he'd still be a billionaire. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, you know, the idea of, you know, we got to be careful. But I do feel like for me, like I told her I wanted to do. I wanted to literally do a, a blog called "I Got Time Today," and I wanted to just literally—I wanted to literally take all the, take w any any reviewer, and I wanted to get into their life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get on their social media. I wanted to go over there. It won't take long. <laughs> one, <'Cause> half <laughs> of them ain't got nothing going on. Nothing going on. They living in some studio apartment with a fucking hot pot with a roommate was, with a room, and they you know what I'm saying they, they mad because they don't want to see us have something to say or so. So I feel like. It's a, del a delicate balance, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like the more success you have, the less you really can, uh, you're supposed to like sort of open up, but the more I want to, because mm -hmm. the more I'm like, fuck it, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, if you cancel me now, I'll be okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I don't want to just start trouble, but I, I, at the same time, I feel like bringing my kids and my family into it, that's, that's when it changes. Line. That's when it changes. But a lot of people don't know that you, it's, you don't have to demean other races to be black and proud. That's right. That's why I think I master. That's why I get along with everybody. Like I've, I, when you see me, I I come off as a black and proud man, and I stand on that. Dark but it, black, dark black. But, every, <laughs> but but everybody know I stand on love for all who have love for all. Yeah. So it's, it, when people understand, it's a way to be strong and be proud of who you are without demeaning the next race. We can move. Yeah, you give respect, you get respect. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, but that's not always the case. case. You know right. What I'm saying? Especially in Hollywood. In particular and i mean i feel like you've been able to it seems like what you speak of now is it coming from our people or people that look like us for the most part a lot of it really I think twi yeah. you know, twitter is i personally feel like you should have to register for twitter and the reason i say that is you get people get real digitally brave mm, man, when what? they can just say something with no anonymously and it'd be 20 people who sound like twenty thousand. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, you saying something, I feel like everybody don't get the mic. Everybody don't get a chance to sing. I'm, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like you now have this this situation where people feel like everybody's opinion counts. Right. And everybody's opinion don't count. You right. know what I'm saying? Everybody didn't put in the work. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not fucking, yeah. you know, given the same talents and, and opportunities. The least qualified are the loudest, too. Yeah. The least qualified are the loudest. Uh, upbringing, Inglewood, how did that raise you as a person? Um, or shape you, excuse me. It, it, it was it was Pacquiamo then Inglewood. I feel like it um, it taught me everything. I feel like you know I, it was crazy because when you grow up in those situations, you don't know you're broke because everybody's broke. You know what I'm saying? That's and that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like I always tell this story. You know, people used to come over my house. Then some one of the neighbors used to come over our house for dinner. I'm like, why they always got to be over? Our, why they come? You know what I'm saying? And I always would complain. And then one day I came home, and the lights. You know what I'm saying? It didn't work. You know what I'm saying? And my mom's like, we're gonna go over to Johnson. And I was like, oh That's shit. Why. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like they was coming over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that was you know, that's the beauty of that situation, you know what I'm saying, when you're in that community. But I feel like when I got a chance to sort of cross over and get it going to different schools, I I feel like I have you get you have more respect and you you know what I'm saying, you understand the opportunities differently than people who've been in that situation. Mm. And I think that's my kids. I worry about my kids not getting that 
know what I'm saying? Because they've come up in a situation where they didn't have that struggle, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I feel like that's what you... you How do you want. balance that? Because I, I try to balance it too, because obviously we all work our asses off so our kids didn't have to come up the way they did. And particularly you and I with... My twins are biracial. My son, I'm, well, shit, I'm biracial. So all three of my sons are, are biracial. So you know I mean, so there's kind of that colorism thing and then also now like my kids live behind the gate and go to private school yeah but i didn't yeah you know what i mean we were so how do you balance that as having your kid have an understanding of everyone isn't maybe this blessed or this is not you know what i mean yeah. like, what's what's that balance in parenting for you you know it's, i got six kids and it's oh you sound like jack <laughs> it's six different people you know what i'm saying it's proof that it's nature over nurture like it's they kind of your kids are going to be who they are you can kind of teach them some stuff, you know what I'm saying? And they can have some morals, but you know, people are who they are. But I feel like I look up and I just wanna, came back from college tours with my daughter and she got accepted to all these great schools that wanted her. And she's like, I wanna go to Spelman. And, and for me, I'm like, I didn't push that. I went to black college, you know what I'm saying? But she wants that experience. She's like, yo, I, I didn't grow up in situations where I'm around white people my whole life she was like I, I she went there and she was like this is fucking this mecca is home, right? to me and mm. she felt it you could see when she was walking around she didn't matter if the camp other campuses looked better this like she was like i want to be around people and so i feel like in some aspect there's something she learned and something she got but i definitely feel like um you know i got you know there's times when i remember i asked you know like what y'all want for christmas and a couple of people they were like nothing i'm like nothing the fuck are you talking about now like i was like i fucked up you know what i'm saying like you don't want nothing like i feel like that is hard for me you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying and knowing like are they gonna still have that hustle because that hustle is what matters Man. It's, it's a necessity. Uh, graduated in mass media arts in 96 from clark atlanta university what was that like going from california to atlanta um, I think it was the best thing I ever did because I was getting in trouble out here. You know what I'm saying? I was starting to do dumb shit and my friends wasn't really doing shit. And when I went away, I got a chance to see like what the rest of the country was like. And it's different when you're in L.A. You know what I'm saying? L.A. is a really specific place. Mm -hmm. But when you go away and you see like, you know, I got to meet dudes from Texas and Florida and Atlanta and New York. And, and they kind of like, you know, we all kind of were there trying to do something better. And I think that was, you know, you know, my best friend who passed away is Shakir Stewart. Like we, he was deaf, he was president of Def Jam and got to do all this stuff. And my boy Kenny Burns and Josh, you know what I'm saying? Like I got to see like dudes that I took still to this day, you know what I'm saying, are still my people. And mm -hmm. I feel like I, I don't know if I would have, if I stayed here, if I would have either that, not yeah. been in trouble. I talked to Kenny a couple of days ago and I, I live in Atlanta. So okay, yeah, that's, that's my, my name. Guy. Yeah, <laughs> like we, he's a, he's a hustler. He'd been yeah. one since we was 17, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, we want to tell the story. Like we, he has the Ray for Edmonds. Like we want to. I want to get into one of those things that me and Kenny talking about. Like, I think the whole notion of like the Italian gangster movie, like that. I think that's over. Right. I loved it. I love. They had like a seventy year run. <laughs> right. <laughs> but now, when you think about what you know, gangster movies are like. I feel like it's black and brown. It's rush. Like why? Why are we? Why have we been so afraid to tell our stories? And I think we're, we're afraid tell. to tell them. If you do one, keep me in mind. I, I think we're afraid to tell them because I'm ready. Let's go because I feel like we're afraid to tell them because it looks like we're glorifying it. But like real talk, like living our truth, like you know, uh, Robert De Niro and you know those dudes, and when they were you know doing the the Godfather, those were respected businessmen who who were proud members of their community, and that, like, they did what they had to do. The dudes I grew up with, you know, what I'm saying like if they had different opportunities. You know what I'm saying? You know how hard it is to make a million dollars on the street mm -hmm. when the police and everybody else is trying to get you and you can mm -hmm. turn out, you know, get a million dollars. Like, you put you in a, if they had put those dudes in a Fortune 500 company, they would have turned it into a billion dollars, but that's not celebrated. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like at the same time, like, I think that, you know, I love a, you know, a good, shoot them up you know what i'm saying i think that when i go you know i go talk to my cousins or i talk to my boys like you'll get caught in gang talk we'll talk about like the such and such and doing and i'm mm -hmm. like we do this an hour and a half and i'm like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like why is that not something that i can be proud of and talk about and say it's entertaining you know what i'm saying and if it's glorifying the the moments of what he's done usually there's another side that you know it's not something and i feel like so that's me and kenny talking about that i want to you know, getting to those stories. I'm doing Michael Concepcion's life story um, with Top. You know, what I'm saying, and I feel like you know, I wanna, I wanna tell those kind of stories. I feel like they're they're ready, they're ready to be told. 
Uh, there's a documentary, uh, fr the Freak Nick documentary is coming out from uh, <laughs> Frank Williams. You know, you, you, know, you know, you know anything about that era? You was in Atlanta at uh, that time. I was right there. Talk to us about that because I, I missed it. I just, I'm looking I, forward to the doc. If you haven't, did you see it? Mm -mm. It's not out it, yet, is it? I mean, have you seen? Have you, did you ever go to Freak Nick? Mm -mm. I cannot explain to you. Really, it's that amazing. It's, it's like nothing. It didn't even seem real. It turned out a city. Back to back to back cars, everybody blasting, everybody blowing, everybody drunk, you know, girls doing, you know, wilding out, you know what I'm saying? Like, but for three days, it's just nothing but us. Like, and I, it, it seemed like it was impossible. <laughs> it seemed like this is impossible. And then they, you know, clean up the city. Like, and I was there when it was happening and I was there when it stopped, but it was, it was crazy. So I really want to know what this documentary is like. And I really want to know if it, me and JD was just talking about it. Like, it was, you cannot explain it if you didn't see it. Mm. There's mm. nothing mm. like it. I'm doing a uh, project with Frank, and he was telling me, like, I'm about to drop this dog that's going to fuck everybody up. I was like, what? It's like a freak, Nick. I was like, oh, shit, I ain't heard that word just in a, in a long time. So There's no way they can recreate that. It's no way. No way. It's no way. And, and the crazy part was it wasn't a lot of, like, crime. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, little patient. It was a whole bunch of raunchy shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it was, okay. it's yeah. like when you go to the strip club, and you're like, yo, this shouldn't be as cool as it is but mm -hmm. you get out of you know what i'm saying 95 percent of the time 90, and you'll go back you know what i'm saying you go back you know what i'm saying it was like you know you give us we everybody was trying to have fun right it was raunchy was kids but it was trying to have fun so i oh, felt wow. like i i'm glad i got a chance to see it that's dope how did you find out navigate your career path and and end up what you're doing today um god blessings luck work you know what i'm saying i i, I was a pa you know what I'm saying? I, I was picking up trash and getting people's, you know, picking up people's kids from, from school and washing cars. And then I, you know, got in a writing program. Um, I wanted to be a director. It was too expensive to direct because you had to get a camera. You had to get, you know what I'm saying? I, I knew what a write, as a writer, I could get through it with a laptop. Mm -hmm. um, and in TV, writers are, are king. You know what I'm saying? Like they, and I, I saw that when I was a PA something they tell you not to do, but I read everything that came across my desk. So when a budget came, I was like, oh shit. I saw what the writers were making. I saw what they were doing. Um, I started writing this lady, Felicia Henderson, who created Soul Food, really kind of like took me under and helped me a lot. Um, and I just got, you know, I got lucky and I, I worked really, if I'm being honest, I worked really hard. And I was like, you know, I, I saw an opportunity and I went after it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I knew I wanted to fucking, you know, have money. I knew I wanted to have a life. I, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I, I didn't hoop, you know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't gonna make it if I if I was in the streets. I knew, I knew that and I knew this was a, a version for me to sort of have something, you know, better for myself. My my wife, um, at the time, you know, she was fine in medical school. I knew some nigga with more than me was gonna come scoop her mm -hmm. if I didn't, you know, get Top my shit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I figured, I just figured my way out. Mm. Um, as a writer, well, and was there any challenges that you went through in your career as a writer? Yeah. Um, when I first started writing, my name was Kenya. I didn't, I, my, I changed my writing name to K Matthew. My middle name is Matthew. Um, K Matthew Bears, because I didn't want, the way you get jobs as a writer is you write what's called a spec script, right? And you write a script and then you show it to people. And people read it and they'll, you know, if they like your writing, they'll bring you in for interview. I didn't want to say Kenya. And just turn them off instantly. Because I was like, they're going to read like, you know, our scripts, you know, it says fade in, you know, and I was like, they're going to read this like fade in. Like they're going to, like, they're going to put their own emphasis on how I'm supposed to sound, whatever. And that was, and that was stupid for me to do, but I was so turned off because they, they were, the time it was only UPN. CW, you know what I'm saying? They, we had only a few versions of what we could be, do. And all that shit didn't really necessarily wasn't what I wanted to do. So I was trying to like be something else. And it didn't really change until I started being like, yo, I'm just going to be Me. who I am. And if mm -hmm. it works, it works. It doesn't, it, you know. Mm. You wrote for shows Soul Food, Girlfriends, The Game, Are We There Yet? How do you look on the run of shows you, uh, you are a part of? Um, I feel like for me, like I, you know, Blackish was the big break for me. Of course, and 
I wrote a ton of pilots, you know, 19 pilots, I think I've said, you know, that I went to different stages of pilots with, you know, when you decide whether or not they're gonna pick it up. Mm -hmm. Some of it went close, some of it got not as close, but I finally was like, fuck it, I'm gonna write about my experience. And I looked around and I saw my kids and, you know, you're taught to give your kids more than you have. But in doing that, what do you so, sort of yeah. lose? You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I think that's what we kind of always are struggling with. But I wrote that story, Fishburn, Lawrence Fishburn really fucked with me. Ant really fucked, Anthony Ant really fucked with me. We really got, we got together, it got picked up. And I started realizing that the, for me, what I wanted to do was like say something. And I wanted to not say it. Like I love the Cosby show, but the Cosby show truthfully could have been a white family. Mm. The big thing about it was that they were black mm -hmm. on TV. And that was a big breakthrough for us. You know what I'm saying? And they had money. And they had money. You know what I'm saying? Now we hadn't seen that before. But I was like, yo, I want to write about a little bit of this experience, but I don't. I want to talk about our experience and what it's like when you get a little bit of money, but you're from this situation, but you want to cheat, you know what I'm saying? And so that was, you know, that was a different experience. And that, and it picked up and that became sort of what I wanted to do moving forward was like, how do we tell, how do I tell a version of my story or something that I know about? And I think the thing that was different for me is like, and you know, I get, I get shit for it, but I want a lot of people to see my shit. Mm -hmm. I want black people, I want white people, I want because I think the real way we we break out is populist success. You know what I'm saying? We sold um, Blackish to FX, and that was FX was the shit at the time. And that's where I was gonna go. Everybody made offers, but FX was where I wanted to go. And Paul Lee, who was the president at ABC, was like, sent me something. It's like, if you come here, I'll put you on after Modern Family. And that for me was everything because I was like, if we can go on, if you give me a chance to play Network. in the league mm -hmm. next to the biggest family comedy, I'm gonna hold my own. Then I and we and we hold on. It changes the conversation. Absolutely. You won't just say this is a little black show. Mm -hmm. And we beat Modern Family mm -hmm. the first couple of weeks. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And it was like that changed the whole conversation. That made everybody start being like, oh, this is this is not just a black show. Right? It's a show that has a star, stars black people, made by black people, but it's a show that speaks to everybody. And that became sort of like what I wanted to do moving forward. I wanted to do big shit that was for us, but actually spoke to everybody. Cause I think, you know, I'm all down for like, you know, this, you know, things that are like niche and things, stuff like that. But I really feel like how we went on a big stage is like, we got to like, win on a big stage. You know what I'm saying? We got to sort of get to the playoffs. We got to fucking, you know, get to the award shows. We got to really sort of step up and win at that get your moment. Stripes, absolutely. How was was that pit? Did that pitch different than others because you were actually opening up your personal life to to an extent? Yeah, uh, with I, that. Yeah, I think it was different and it was better for me. Easier, easier, and and like I, 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 you can't tell me, you can't really give me notes on my life. <laughs> how to be me? You know what I'm <laughs> like, you can't tell me how to be you, me. You can't give me notes on my life. Yeah. And it started being like when they would give me notes. My little trick would be like, well, culturally speaking, they're like, yeah, yeah, culturally speaking, you're right. Like, and I would be like, you can't tell me about the culture and how I, you know, what I experienced. And I feel like that sort of moving forward became, that's what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Is like do stuff that felt like it's us, but it's on a bigger level. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm the Rich Paul thing, like one of the th movies in the movie, one of the things we talk about is the NBA is 96% African-American workforce. You know what I'm saying? And maybe it's dropped a little bit since we did the thing. And the only nigga to own a team had to be the Michael Jordan of basketball to own a team. You know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make any, any sense. sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense. And I feel like the notion of, you know, they love us. They love our culture. They love, they, even in the comedy I just did, there's never been, it was a hundred million dollar movie. There never had been a, a major comedy about what that di was directed by a black person. And I'm like, hey. why? That's great. You know what I'm saying? I love Tim's story. I love these, but like they didn't get a chance to do that big of a thing. I'm like, but you'll eat up Kevin Hart. You'll eat up Dave Chappelle. You'll eat up mm -hmm. Eddie Murphy. You'll eat up, you know, Chris Rock. But like, you won't let us tell our own stories. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you know, that was a big opportunity for me. So, um, obviously, Blackish is is greenlit. How did how did that cast come about? Because that was a pretty it was special magic. cast. That was magic. I'm sure y'all, I, I, I always do basketball analogy, but I'm sure y'all been on teams and you're like, this shit just happened. It was supposed to happen. Mm. There's moments where you're like, you can't explain it. Like just everything started, you know, happening. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like um, Marseille, you just knew when she walked in the room, like she just was like, this little girl with glasses that just blew up. Marcus, Yara, 
Tracy. Um, I'd worked with Tracy before, but like people, they were like, where'd you discover this girl? I'm like, she just had 300 episodes <laughs> on girlfriends. Girlfriend, like, and right. they didn't even know who she was. That's mm -hmm. how little they, they, pay they look at us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And, and um, but like everybody, you know, and I think Fish was the, Fish and Ant were the, the linchpins, but Lawrence Fishburne coming to do TV, nobody has really seen him do that. And he made everybody, you know, when they came to work, it was work time. So, you know, that, I think that was, it was really destined to be, and you know, it, it, from the moment we started shooting the pilot, I felt like that was something different. Hmm. Uh, you go into uh, Black AF uh, and experience success, success with that. What was that like? Um, it, it was not what I expected. I wasn't going to be in it. Rashida was my homegirl. Um, she was a big deal. She asked, she told me, she was like, I think you should do this. She's like, I think this should be your curb, your Larry David. Mm. She's like, we don't get to do that. You know what I'm saying? People don't get to see that there's a real black dude behind this. And she, um, and I was like, I'm not an actor, but she like walked me through it. I would be doing scenes and she'd like, you know, stop. And she'd be like, you know, people have to be able to understand what you're saying, right? And I'm like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? She would help me Coach through it. through it, right? Um, but it it changed my life because it was, it went from, being behind the scenes or whatever to people actually seeing me in front of the camera and seeing like that was at my real house you know what i'm saying seeing you know a version of what my life were, was mm -hmm. like and it, you know it's the thing when i'm out people will come up and be like well when season two like it's the, the thing that I, I get the most sort of love from even though it wasn't critics didn't like it just like i feel like you know it was a lot of people that from the culture that really responded to it and i feel like i feel like it changed my life What's up, world? It's your boy, Stack5, coming to you with a message from All The Smoke's partner, DraftKings. Even though basketball season is over, DraftKings is bringing the heat this summer during baseball season. DraftKings Sportsbook is offering all new customers $150 in bonus bets instantly if they place a $5 wager. Yep, you heard it right. New customers bet just $5 on any wager, and new customers will receive $150 in bonus bets instantly. Look to take a swing at an even bigger payout. DraftKings has got you covered with the same game parlays. Build your own same game parlay where you can combine multiple bets from the same game into one big bet. If mobile sports betting isn't available yet in your state, don't worry. You can still get in on the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code SMOKE. Bet $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Mm. Uh, got a chance to work with the legendary Samuel L. Jackson yeah. uh, with Shaft. What was that like? I mean, he's a beast. He's a beast. He comes to play. You know what I'm saying? Like, he literally, when you he steps on the thing, like, he'll eat you up if you're not ready. You know what I'm saying? He was Tim Story directed it. So, you know, him and Tim were in a good place. But like he came, I, I feel like it was still it, that was one of the critics didn't love, but it was one of my favorite comedies. I feel like he was hilarious. Um, when the critics came out, they were like, you know, was, this is toxic masculinity. I'm like, yo, this is shaft. <laughs> right. I should have called it shaft toxic masculinity. Like that's what it was that's what supposed he is, to be. You right. know what I'm saying? But it wasn't, you know, it was a uh, you know, I feel like I, I don't even look at reviews and stuff anymore. I feel like because the stuff that gets great reviews and stuff, sometimes I'm not as happy about and the stuff mm -hmm. that doesn't get re reviews. It was just, funny to me. Uh, I laughed my ass <laughs> off. I laughed my ass off. Yeah, it was. He's he's funny. And, and I feel like the kid, Jesse, who played his son was funny. He killed it. Yeah. He killed it. Yeah. He killed it. Yeah. He killed it. You could t from two different worlds, but they 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 meshed good together on on, on camera. They yeah, and, good. and Sam's seventy years. And you know, you know, you know, my girl was on the beginning of that movie. Who? Regina. Oh, I love her. So yeah. to see, because she had the beginning. <laughs> she had the beginning saying, "We'll be working together." In the future. <laughs> ah, she's the best. Yeah, she's dope. She really, really is. How has your from you starting off to now? How has your storytelling changed? Um, I think it's more honest. I think I, I care a little bit less, you know what I'm saying? Like About what people think. It, yeah, I yeah. think like, you know, it's it's a little bit more like, you know, I'm a little bit more like, I won't say confident, but I'm like, I'm. if it doesn't work, I've, I have I can take, I can, I haven't put up a lot of bricks, so I feel like I can put the, shoot, take my shots, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, in a different way that I, I'm not, I'm not as careful with them as I was before, I feel right. like, and I think, you but know. But you've earned that. You know what I'm saying? Kinda, you know what you're doing now. I think so. 
I think <laughs> <laughs> you can say that. I think so. I think so. I think yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? I feel like, and if I don't, you know, I, 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 I think I got a, I, I get a little bit, a few misses, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, it's um, allowed. And I, and I also, you know, feel like I get a chance to, I'm seeing Issa Rae, I'm seeing, you know, Courtney, Courtney Kemp, I'm seeing Lena Waithe, I'm seeing Ryan Coogler, I'm seeing all this, you know, younger, like, I'm, I'm loving them and like, different than, to be honest, like, when I was coming up, like, I didn't have like a lot of people who like, were there any, not to cut you off, but were there people you could look up to that look like you? There were people I could look up to, but they weren't really fucking with me. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they Interesting. weren't, you know, like, cause it was a little bit more crabs in a barrel yeah. kind of mentality because it was so few, they made us feel like that. You and had now, to compete with each other. You did. And now I feel like the younger generation is like, they show up, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like me and Will Packer, we're, we're cool. You know what I'm saying? If I call Lena, if I call Issa, if I call, you know, Ava, if I call, like they'll show up, you know what I'm saying? They're not showing up asking for a check. I'm going to try to get them a check. Right. You know what I'm saying? But then it's not about that. It's like, they know I'm going to show up for them. And I think right. that's a different situation than we had before. It's enough out here for all of us. It is. It's enough I, I would, for Rich all Paul is like, we're talking about just in general, like, the contracts cats are getting now, like it's it to me. If you, I, I saw that this last year, looking at that, the first like 10, 15 contracts, like if you have dudes who have $250 million contracts, you know what I'm saying? Which you're worth in credit and which you're, you know what I'm saying? Where, where you can get five of those dudes together and what they, they can oh, buy a team. Shut it down. Easy. You know what I'm saying? But, but they have to be told like that. that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And like we're in a position now where, like the bag is different, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And it's about ownership and it's about like, I think that, you know, I looked at like, you know, golf is the whitest, oldest, you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be, the, the Saudis came in and they bought golf, you know what I'm saying? They came in and it was like, they bought that shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, like we got money. Like, why can't we go in, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do our own expansions. Why do we have to compete? You know what I'm saying? And people who don't look like us get to own the teams mm -hmm. when we can, you know, put the you know put our money together go to finance and go to capital and, and literally own our own teams i feel like it has to the next five or ten years we got to see that quadruple but it's got to be that more more of that thinking though because we don't even think like that we're so used to coming up by ourselves that we don't realize that obviously the fist is stronger than the finger you yeah know what i mean we can do anything together anything literally twitter is black twitter why don't we own black Twitter? Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Twitter's not, Twitter wouldn't be fun if it weren't Without, for black people. You know what I'm saying? Like, not. So why don't we own our own Twitter? You know what I'm saying? Why do we keep, you know what I'm saying? Like we have all this and we do this, all the memes, all the funny shit is on there. Why don't we own our own shit? You know what I'm saying? So I feel like just having those conversations and getting around, you know, other dudes who have, you know, some means, I think that it, the conversation will, and stuff was going to change pretty soon. Three part question: What piece of advice would you sep would you uh, give to an aspiring actor today? Myself. Um, are you? Do you want to act? I, yeah, I started. Yeah, saying, I started. Yeah. Oh, really? What are yeah. you doing? I did. Um, I did a show on um, with uh, Thomas Jones. Okay. They got a show that they doing. I'm not really supposed to say it, but I'm telling you. Yeah. Y'all can edit this out. On. Uh, uh, what's. Uh, don't, let me. I, it'll come to me again. But I did it like three weeks ago. My first cameo. Okay. On the TV series that he got. I, it's it's crazy you say that because you waking up in the morning and rubbing the sleet and just talking, I'm like, there's a naturalness to what you do. And I'm like, yeah, he could do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and I feel like that's the... <laughs> seriously, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's funny, but it's real. That's and the feel, one that could tell you that too. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's the shit that like, you know, that pops. And I feel like we don't have enough. That's the thing that like, there's this there's this movie, this uh, series out, Beef, right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a... Um, uh, Ali Wong and forget the other dude's name, John Chu. I want to say John Chu. I don't know what it, but it, it's phenomenal. But the dude who blows me away is this dude, David Cho, who's in it. He was an artist and he's the dude who did a piece in Facebook's office and they said, You can get $60,000 or we can give you stock. And he took the stock and the stock is worth like $500 million right mm. now. So he, but he's the most, nat he's just natural and you can't. Can't buy that. You can't buy natural. Mike Epps, natural. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's certain actors. Chappelle doesn't even do jokes. You know what I'm saying? You've ever talking. hung out with Chappelle. It's, you know what I'm saying? Like, exactly what you get when you hang out with him is what he goes and does himself. So I think that part of it. So I would say if my piece of advice of actors is, are you an actor who 
really, really, really needs, you know, acting class and, you know, everyone needs to understand it. But I think sometimes acting class for me can can take away that natural ability because mm -hmm. you're trying to like fit into a, a, a envelope or checklist that may not be you. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there's something about, you know, real stars, you know, Robert De Niro, um, Pacino, Clooney, they're the same dudes basically every movie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Real mm -hmm. stars, you buy them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you're buying them every movie. They're a version of that movie. There's actors, there's Philip Seymour Hoffman, and there's, you know, great character actors, and those dudes are different. They can do something, but I feel like the a real star, sometimes you're buying them. And so you gotta ask yourself, an actor, are you a star or are you an actor? You know what I'm saying? So that would my, be my advice. Mm. Yeah, I'm a star. I've been a star. <laughs> Talk that shit. I've been a star a long time. Talk that shit. I've been a star a long time, bro. Talk long that time. shit. And my hands ain't wet. Hands ain't wet yeah, either. So you know I ain't lying. Yeah, nah. <laughs> what no would lie. you tell a writer? Writer's right. Writer's right. Writer's right. That's not, that's not more. Like if you're a writer, you write. And you keep writing. You know what I'm saying? And you, you know what I'm saying? If it don't work, you keep writing something else. Like that's the, there's no, there's no other advice. Writer's right. Cause you get back, I look back at the shit I writ, writ, wrote 20 years ago and I'm like, ugh, you know what I'm saying? And I, then I look at stuff you know, now and I'm like, oh, I can take that 20 years, I can rewrite it. But like, you keep getting better. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, you, you know, from the time you hoop, you know what I'm saying? To when you start hooping, to when you fight. I tell people I was talking, was talking they were talking about uh, Kenny Lofton came in, somebody in the room was like, yeah, but they only play six dudes. But I'm like, this nigga put up 42 points. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't care how many people they right. play. You know I'm saying he put up he 40, from my hometown. I'm like, he put up 42 points. Yep. Man. And I'm Period. like, he got game. I'm like, most of the dudes that people call bums, I'm like, if they went to the best rec run in the world, they put up 200 points. Everybody on the bench could bust your ass. 200, I'm like, literally, I went to a run 10 years ago with Mitch Richmond, fat, out of shape. This nigga was hit, shooting blindfold from half court still you know what i'm saying i'm like the i the idea of when you really know your craft it's different you know what i'm saying and you really do it and you put those shots up the bummiest nigga on the nba team is better than him so i feel like the same thing with a writer if you keep writing and keep writing and keep writing i feel like you get better and better and better to the point where you you know you feel confident with it mm. yeah master director um it's it's confidence it's all like that's it's either you know kill or be killed you know what i'm saying when you when you get behind a, a camera to direct it is they have to trust that you know what you're doing and the moment that you show any bit of weakness you know what i'm saying they will eat you up i i was on that set and it was eddie murphy Joni hill julie rich dreyfus all, all these you know what i'm saying david duchovny neil long and it was a moment like we were in between scenes and they were talking and they like, and I was trying to like start the scene. They're talking, and I just fucking flipped out. And Lauren was like, "Oh, bro's about to spiral!" Like <laughs> she was like, "Bro, it's spiraling!" And I was like, "Yo, I'm not, I'm not the fucking substitute teacher." You know, how the substitute teacher comes and everybody's talking, mm -hmm. and I like fucking you know Respect flipped out. This. And they kind of like Eddie was like, "Huh." Substitute teacher, I get that. So I kind of like, <laughs> but it was a moment of respect. You had to grab it. You know what I'm saying? And like, and they all at that point wanted me to win. But that's the thing with directing, like, you got to be the general. Mm. And the moment they sense any weakness, you got to know what you want. You got to have a plan and you got to really make them feel because, you know, they got to trust you. Right. They putting their face there. You know what I'm saying? They got to trust that, what, that you're not putting up a brick. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's so, a big responsibility. So I think that would be my mm. thing mm. is like, you know, be confident. Mm. What was it like working with Kid Cudi? I think you know it's it's crazy. I, I'm a, I'm a fan. I got he's you know my 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 brother. I feel like what he did in some aspects for music, people don't give him. You know Travis Scott is Travis Scott because of Scott Muscutty. That's where the Scott in his name came from. You know what I'm saying? Like he created like a whole brand super talented. of emo, Dude, super talented. Uh, emo rap or like you know what I'm saying like whatever. I feel like it's not for everybody, but I was really surprised as an actor. Like he came, animation's hard, you know what I'm saying? And he came in and like, you know, fucking, um, what's his name that, uh, uh, Ty Dolla Sign. Mm -hmm. Ty Dolla Sign murdered. Like I, people, you would never think, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, that was real talented. So I feel like, you know, the music, Ty, Cuddy put, put together an album. He held the album for two years. That's hard to do because everybody wants to put out money. They want to get their streams. He held that album for two years. That's how long it took to animate, you know, mm. thing, whatever. It came out. I, um, I still think we're, we're going to be getting the Emmy oh, conversation. Dope. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to check it out. A lot of people really responded to it. Um, 
you know, and and was you know it was animation, and we don't get a chance to do no. animation. I'm doing the Bob Marley, um, like a, a, a it's called you know One Love and can I say that? I'm doing Bob uh, Bob Marley uh, animated <laughs> animated movie for Disney right now. And it's the first time the family ever gave all the music wow. to it, and it's like a love letter, like how Moana was a love letter to mm -hmm. the South Pacific. It's a love letter to Jamaica. That's you know what I'm saying, and it's animated, and I feel like animation lasts forever if mm -hmm. you do. How it. you gonna do that with no tree? Which he's, it's trees in there. Oh, okay. We, we okay. We Disney gotta, cool with that? Yeah, we yeah. It's it's that's, that's part of their culture. You got you that right. That's gonna say. be good. That's you, gonna be good. You there. can't take it's it's not, and we're seeing that now. You know what I'm saying I'm looking at all this stuff that like you know, um, I, it's crazy. Paul Pierce yesterday, you know, had a his interview came out and he was like, "What did I do wrong?" Right? He was talking about the thing. Shout out, Paul. He just and, lost his mom too. I know. I, I, I heard and I yeah. really lo love to him. Um, he, I, it made me think, what did he do wrong? In the big scheme, I understand the morals clause and things like that, but he had a point. He's in, he's in California. He's enjoying himself. Weed is legal. It's his birthday. It's his birthday. He's playing cards with his boys. He didn't do anything. There was no guns in the thing, whatever he didn't do. Anything. But I feel like those conversations are like, we got to, you know what I'm saying, like, why is it Cheech and Chong can be this or this person can right. be that? But like, if we, you know what I'm saying, like, this is legal. I'm glad they took weed off the table for the NBA because I feel like, why is <laughs> Thanks, You know what I'm saying? But like, why is that, you know what I'm saying, something that I feel like, I don't, you know what I'm saying, I, I fuck weed here and there, but it don't, it's not good for me in terms of writing because I, yeah. I can't focus. But I feel like, you know, I, it's so much shit I, I've been reading just about like the health benefits. I re was reading stuff, but just like dreads, like, like, uh, people have been talking about like forever. The Rosses was talking about their their dreads was their antenna, mm -hmm. and they connect them, and they kind of sound like it's some hotel like bullshit. I was reading some on, on my trip, and hair is an extension of our nervous system, and that's a scientific fact that they do not tell you that. And then and one of the reasons that they started studying that is like um, in Vietnam, Korea, like Indians, Native Americans. Are amazing trackers, right? They you know can go track animals, track people, whatever. And so the government was giving out grants and getting Indian trackers to come help them when we were going fighting these war wars and foliage or whatever, right? And they could find anything. They were amazing. But once they sat down, they sat down and they gave them the standard. Um, uh, they lost their uh, army across the country. Really, like we don't feel the same. And that's what made them start researching and they found out that it was our hair is a part of like how we it has you know, like you know how your uh, that's why your hair on your arms raise because mm -hmm. it's a part of your your, your nervous system mm -hmm. and i felt like you know we used to get sweated for like the crown act is a thing we used to get sweated because we want to wear our hair long we want to put our hair in braids like all all the things that i feel like we have been having to fight for it's like there's always i'm not a conspiracy theorist but there's always something behind that conversation that I feel like we could, if we dig a little bit further, it's like maybe there's something else we don't mm, know. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. It's, it, it, but that's good. That's a good thing why we have people like you because you understand it can't nobody tell our stories better than we can tell them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that, and a lot of stuff would get twisted the wrong way if they told another way because there's no way you can tell a Bob Moore story without the tree, right? But only we can tell that story. Can't nobody else tell it. Then they wouldn't tell it the way we would tell it. Right. I agree. And they've and and other people have been allowed to tell our stories for too long. For too long, the dudes who wrote the New Roots, white dudes, they also wrote Planet of the Apes, which is the irony of that is fucking right, crazy. Right, yeah. And I'm like, would I ever be allowed to write something that was you know significant to other people that you know what I'm saying in a culture thing? I don't know that I would. You know what I'm saying? I don't know that we get those same opportunities. So I feel like you know. Um, when we do get our opportunities, we need to make sure we tell them the right way. That's like you writing Titanic. Yeah, or, or me writing the Holocaust Schindler's or something. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I feel like mm -hmm. I, if I wrote word for word the best version of that movie, I still wouldn't, it, it would be like I was, it would be looked at as disrespectful. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter if it's a really good script or not, it'd be looked as disrespectful. And I feel like, but it's not told, so that's not looked at the same way when they want to write mm. our movies. And right. I feel like, you know, mm. we have to sort of, we got a certain point. We got to sort of take control of our own narrative. Mm -hmm. Good point. Uh, quick hitters, man. First thing to come to mind, let us know most meaningful film or memorable film or show that influenced you. Um, Jerry Maguire was a big one for me. Wow. Yeah. You interesting. Know what I'm saying? I like the way Cameron Crowe told that story and, and told, you know, 
put me inside where the agent was, put me inside that world. I, that was a, I still, I like voiceover a lot. And that, I think he used voiceover and stuff like that. So that's a big, that was a big one for me. First thing you do in the morning, last thing you do at night? <sighs> um, first thing I do in the morning when I wake up, I say, thank you for, thank you for giving me another day. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big go to sleep to TV fan, you know what I'm saying? So I probably just fall asleep watching, yeah, watching TV. Whatever, TV. I want to ask, like, because you definitely a movie and TV dude. This is not even on the list, but what shows are you watching right now? Um, Secession is, is crazy. Um, um, I like, I was watching Beef. Um, I, lo I, was, I was loving Snowfall for a while, and I think it kind of took a, took a turn. Um, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> are, are you caught? Are you caught up with it? Huh? You caught up? You stopped? I stopped. Should I oh, keep going? Yeah, 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 he's back it's active. Now. Should I keep going? Yo, all right. Damson's my boy, and, I, and all those people. John was my boy. It's back it just, active it went, now. it went crazy. All of a sudden, you know, what I'm saying this nigga had a real estate company and was like, like a new woman, and I'm just like, hold on, what? You know, what I'm saying so. I, but I, I'm gonna go back. If I, but if the I, woman plays a key part in what's going on now. Okay, I gotta go back. I, um, I fuck with power. Mm. Um, and um. You know, I like a lot of documentaries, but I also, you know, because I, I want to keep them like, I, I, I watch Euphoria. I know I sound, I sound crazy. No, that's I dope. Think, I think it's a dope I watched show. the first season. I'm season. waiting for Yellowstone to come back on. Is Yellowstone good? Man, that shit fire. Man. Is it? Is it? Yeah, it's I, the I most to... watched show in the world. Yeah, that shit is fire. Is you it? Know, I, don't, I don't watch shit like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> let me tell you, I don't watch shit like that. <laughs> to be honest, I don't. <laughs> I don't. But, but let me tell you why, why, why it got me. When I seen they handling everything like we would. Like over land, you come on my land. I ain't gonna. I'm gonna go hang you right here on my land. I'm gonna shoot you, and all my sons know to kill you. No, it's dope. It's and and the sister is crazy. I sent her to college just so she can come back and terrorize all y'all with her smarts. Now it's dope. And Kevin Costner, it plays like he's a mob boss. I'm a, I'm a fan. Nah, it's just dope. It's dope. And like I said again, I don't watch it like that, but it's dope. <laughs> I love that. That's what I want. That's what I want people to say that about shit that I do. That mm -hmm. like I don't watch this, but that, I think that's that's when you know something really. You is did something over. well right. to the point where I watched eighteen. Uh, it's two more of them. It's nineteen twenty five and the eighteen twenty three. But it's all built up to the same shit about how they got the land. Oh yeah, Harrison for Ford. Yeah, Harrison. Ford. I watched all of them. Okay, and that ain't my shit, but that shit was good. So that dude wrote. Uh, Taylor Sheridan, he wrote one of my, he wrote this movie, Hell or High Water. And that movie was like one of my favorite, favorite movies. So I, I was said I was going to watch Yellowstone, but then it just felt too CBS-ish to me. It was the one where they were bank robbers. It was him and his, it was uh, Chris Pine, and I forget the other dude's name, but they played bank robber. Ben Fo yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben Foster, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I like Ben Foster. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's dope. Mm-hmm. Um, out of all the sets you worked on, someone that would do a a, a a practical joke or a prank, who's the funny guy on set? Dion Cole. He, he funny he's, shit. He funny in real life. He, he's I my hero. <laughs> yeah, he funny His stand-ups are classic. classics. He, he got one of some of the best stand-ups. I produced this first Netflix special, and it was I was one of the proudest moments. I like. He what was, was that one called? Um, he dope. Cole, Cole, uh, Cole Hearted Seminar. Slap? Yeah, what was that? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Snap. Yeah, snap. Oh. Slap. Slap. Yeah. 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 That's when we What that shit stand for again? Uh, sound like a plan. Sound like a plan. Like a plan. Yeah. <laughs> he talked yeah. about niggas how black how black people always want to get the bones out of fish. You know what I'm saying? Oh we yeah. Just make that shit the yeah. <laughs> make that shit the baby food. And hey, his character on Blackish was classic. The, yo, the way that happened was I asked him to come on as a writer because he's his pen is crazy. He wrote for Conan. He writes his own. You know what I'm saying? Like his the way his mind. Yeah, makes, his humor is different. It's different. Yeah. Right? So I asked him to come on as writer. He couldn't get out of it. And I was like, yo, I have this role. Would you come just, you know, fuck around with it? And he murdered it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, we got to immediately make him a regular. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's he, dope. he went and just, and like, he was just my, my boy. And, I, and he's one of those dudes, he's a Chicago dude. The way he presents is what he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's no other. And I, I love that. I love, like, you know what I'm saying? That when you meet people, who they are is who they are. What no matter what you get. Yeah, yeah. And I, I feel like he's not one of those kind of people with different settings. He changes who he is is who he is. I can respect people like that. And I want to just. I gotta say, I'm, I love y'all podcast. I'm doing a podcast. I have a podcast. So I want. I want Weezy who would kill me is one thing. Drama. We have DJ Drama is doing a podcast on hip hop right now. He's about to go do Pharrell. I am a huge fan of what y'all have done, 
and Thank seeing y'all build, like I'm learning. And I've been, at, you know, me and Matt been trying to figure this out, but I, I'm learning just watching y'all be y'all. You know what I'm saying? And it started off just like, what is this? And then it started growing. And I think it's because y'all are real. And you know what I'm saying? You know, you actually make people feel comfortable. And that's like, so that part for me, I'm learning. And I, you know, was I, as I get into it, I'm trying to look around and see who I can learn from. Yeah, so that's dope. We drama has that. that. Yeah, he does. Nah, he, he got that. He does. He's, sure. he, he's, his albums, I'm really like that. And he really is like yeah, that. That's my guy. Five movies, you sh five movies that, you, that should never be remade. Paid in full. Mm. Don't don't do it all. You can't. You can't. They mastered it. Yeah, <laughs> they fucked up Belly when they tried to do that with Belly. Paid in full. Um, casino. Nice. Um, Goodfellas. Um, we need a black Goodfellas. It, but if let we do our own. That was a the great black version. Yes, yeah, that, was, that yeah. was a great version yeah, for them. Yeah. Um, don't 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 um. Oh, I want to say it, but I, I, they're doing it. I'm scared because I love, and she's my girl, so don't be mad. But I'm, I love color purple. You can't do that. They're doing it over, and I, 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 my girl's doing this. So I hope, and Blitz is a, a great director. But I'm, I'm. It was, it, it's crazy that how good that movie was. Yes. So I, I, they have a lot on their shoulders, and I, I believe the people who are doing it. They're gonna do it over, but that was one of my favorite. To me, that arguably is one of the favorite best black movies. Even All though time. Steven Spielberg made it, it's one of the, one of the best black movies. Everybody cried watching that. Everybody. Everybody cried. Watching Everybody. Suge Avery and fucking like just every, it made so many. Oprah. Nitty. You know what I'm saying it, yeah, it made everybody. Everybody stars. Um, That's four. Um, and I, I mean, this will never happen. But my favorite sports movie, was, I, he got game. You know what I'm saying? I feel yeah. like it and was. You can't remake that. It was. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like what Ray did and what mm -hmm. but that's an example of a director and editing. I'm sure Ray wasn't that. Yeah. I'm positive. I'm positive, you know what I'm saying? He was getting through lines here and there. But what Spike did and why he led him and what he made in the edit, it was a masterpiece. From that opening, you know, Terrence Blanchard, I think it was Terrence Blanchard, that that it's slow and it's people hooping all over the country. Yep. It was a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, five dinner guests, dead or alive. You plus five. Um, Jay, I'm, I'm still. I still think Jay got some stuff to to tell me. Um, <laughs> uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Who's that? That um, sound familiar. He wrote a book. He's if you if he, you should read all of his books tonight. Okay. He wrote a, the one of the best one was. Um, Outliers was a good one. He was the one who, who started coining the ten thousand hour rule. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Come Whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He wrote another one called. Um, Blink, you know what I'm saying? He wrote, but anyway, he's a he's just a he, he does interesting things. Um, James Baldwin, um, Malcolm X, mm. um, and Michael Jordan. Last question, Chief. If you could have a guest on our show, who would it be? But you have to help us get him on your show. But do you or realize? Her? How deep his Rolodex, oh, it's not even Rolodex <laughs> yeah. his phone book goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if I could have a guest on your show, I, I, you know what's crazy? Who needs to be on this show? Who? Kanye. Ooh. Yeah, we need. We got some stuff to talk about. I think that you, I think that you could absolutely. I, I honestly think that I'm gonna just be completely honest. I think that he has some things that he probably, you know emotionally like you know some from a real standpoint i yeah. think we don't we don't get the the same love when people are like you know what I'm saying there's certain illness and things like that and he has moments i think he would say that but i also think that he is mis is misguided mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and i think that he has a he has a a delivery problem more than a content problem yeah. you know what i'm saying how he delivers things and and he's sort of like i feel like he's not studied enough but i think that there is the idea that there's a genius there, mm, definitely him. there, and I think that he went the hate speech that he was talking. He was mis he was misguided. Mm. You know what I'm saying, and he was. I, like, I'm a big fan, bro, and I would love to have him on the show. You know, just the things he said about George Floyd. That's what triggered me. You that, know what I'm saying? That, and that's that, the only thing that triggered me. Everything else. But I'm, that was I'm, a bit. That was a, you know, and I feel like we as a as a culture. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I I have a barber cuts my hair. She was on a movie, so I started going to a barber shop every now and then, and I miss those barber shop conversations because they're the best conversations. And when you get money, niggas stop going to the shop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you miss those conversations. 
But I went in the shop and I, I literally called Richard Love and my agent. I was like, can I get Adam Silver on the phone? Because it was the same time they were sweating Kyrie. And I was like, yo, this is too much. This seems like you're trying to coup to Kente Toby us. You know what I'm saying? I was like, he said he's sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, oh, you I'm, got a chance to talk to Adam Silver. I, I tried to. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? But the yeah, message right. got to him. I right. was like, I'm yeah. not even sure this nigga watched the documentary. Right. You know what I'm saying? This nigga's uncle probably was like, yes, and he probably, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how shit goes. You know what I'm mm. saying? And I was like, he's a flat earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, this dude's not a, a, a scientist. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, he's a dude, like, you know what I'm saying? We're taking way too much, giving him way too much credit. And at the same time, I feel like someone needs to, when Charlie Sheen was in trouble, there were people reaching out to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There were people reaching out to him. I feel like the idea of, I don't think that we, we had enough outreach. And what we should have done to me personally as a culture, when Kanye said slavery was a choice, why didn't we fucking have a talk with him? Right. Why didn't we cancel him? If, we, if there was a cancel, which I don't really believe in that shit. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to do that, why didn't we do it? Why do we wait and let somebody else you know what I'm saying, make, do the, exactly. choice, the decision that we did? You know what I'm saying? When George Floyd, when that, when that ignorant ass statement was said, why didn't we fucking step up? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then we get mad when other people do it. Adidas has every fucking right to drop him. Yeah. That that's that's their that's their job. Yes, they're right and they choose to do that. But when we when he said that, why didn't we have a conversation? Why didn't we pull him aside? Why didn't we stop showing up to the concerts? Why didn't we and why don't we check each other and, and police ourselves? Why do we get mad when other people police us, but we don't police ourselves? And why don't we big up ourselves? Why don't we when the image awards comes, why do, why is the image awards not as big as the Oscars? Why don't we take that image award mm, and make them as big as, as the Oscars? Why don't we make our shit show up where everybody who is somebody in our community, we show up, we put on the, the penguin suits, and we make that something mm -hmm. that we're proud of. Same thing I'll be preaching with Allen Iverson game. Hmm. We need to make the Allen Iverson game just as big as the McDonald's game. We why not? Say, why not? It why makes not? more sense. But I don't understand why we don't value each our, other, ourselves, and our and our place in things. You know what I'm saying? We do not allow ourselves to say. You know what? We are the number one consumer. Mm, mm, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Without us, Adidas is about to fold. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Literally. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the idea of like what we can do, but we can't just let this nigga get on there and say slavery is a choice nah. and, and then and not say nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then complain when someone else said we that was our responsibility. Right. You know what I'm saying? They took, they handled. You know what I'm saying? That culture handled their business. Mm -hmm. Somebody came after their people in that culture handled their business. Why don't we handle our business? Because there's no unity. So, you know, that that for me is is a is a big is a big deal. Well, Kanye, bro, you welcome on the show. I I know I said a lot. We just need to have a conversation. That's the that's, that's what it. makes it to be honest with you, your relationship to that situation. That's where I really started actually getting to know you, you know what I'm saying, outside of Mouse in the palace mm -hmm. and shooting threes and you know what I'm saying, but like actually hearing your voice, and it was um you know what I'm saying nobody people don't get to know you outside of that. That's when I actually got to hear you as a man and like you know hear your your voice. That your relationship to that to that situation, no one in the public has the same relationship to you. So the idea that what he said was so offensive, you have in that conversation, that's that's building, yeah. that's mm. unity, that's mm. us showing. Facts. It doesn't mean you got to make make peace with him because mm. he might say some shit that pisses you off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's a I respect him enough to have the conversation that's, with him. That's what it's about. And I feel like we got to have more talks, you know what I'm saying, and more conversation with each other rather than just, you know, shoot us at the club. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Writing each other off. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Kenya, man, we appreciate you, appreciate uh, your you, time huh? tonight, but really just your importance. Uh, I was really looking forward to this because, I mean, I really feel like this is the big title, but, you know, you're, you're pretty much one of the head gatekeepers to our community and our culture and being able to tell our story with not only tell our story, but tell it with people that look like us, too. And, 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 if, and to hear that that's always been kind of your goal and you continue to inspire doing that, man. We really appreciate what you got going on, man. I appreciate so, y'all, man. Thank you for your time today, bro. For Best sure. of luck. I appreciate yeah. you, bro. If you need Jack, you, Jack is really out here acting. Yeah. So, <laughs> man, you can catch this. Kenya Bear, Showtime Basketball YouTube, and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. See y'all next week. Peace. Chill. Closer than we've ever been. Contract agent or lioness? Lioness, sir. We locate the wives and daughters of these high-value targets. And we place an operative close to them. And we kill the target. If we play this right, it is over before it's begun. We move now! Her cover's low! It's that core! Shoot her! I can't do that.
You need to remember what you're fighting for. 